Hey, what's going on? As promised, Law 3 of the 48 Laws of Power, Part 2. Part 1 is a couple of videos ago, but Part 2. So this is Law 3, Conceal Your Intentions. And Part 2, Using a Smoke Screen to Disguise Your Actions. Let's get right into it. An initial judgment of using a smoke screen. You have to use comfort and familiarity like an unreadable poker face to hide your intentions. We'll go into an observance of the law, and it starts off in 1910 with a Mr. Sam Giesel. He was a businessman in Chicago. He retired with a million dollar fortune in 1910 after selling his warehouse business. And that was a good money amassed today. That's like $50 million today. Um, and he was actually approached by the Yellow Kid, uh, that's Joe Weil, one of the most infamous con artists in history. Uh, young Joe Weil approached Sam Giesel about an $8,000 an $8, apartment that Sam had for sale and even offered to pay full price if Sam would wait a few days. Sam was astonished. I mean, $8,000 in 1910 was about $260,000 today. And most people can't say, oh, give me a couple days and I'll get you $260,000 and pay it in full without getting a mortgage. Uh, now, Sam Giesel, the retired businessman, was very intrigued, thinking, how's he going to get this money? That's really nearly impossible to do. Uh, and he eventually got Joe Well, a.k.a. the Yellow Kid, to share his plan. And unfortunate for Sam, Joe's following explanation was merely a smoke screen. This is when the yellow kid used, he laid the smoke screen to conceal his intentions. And Joe's uncle was a secretary to a group of multimillionaires. The rich men bought a hunting lodge that they no longer used. And Joe's uncle told the financiers that he would sell the lodge for $35,000. And Joe's uncle needed a setup man to sell the lodge for $115,000 so that Joe and his uncle could keep the difference and profit a small fortune of their own. Now this was the smoke screen because Sam wanted in. Sam said, you know what, I could be the setup man we could share that profit. So Sam went with the smoke screen. It was set. Mr. Sam Giesel thought, you know, he's going to collect another small fortune, him and the Whale family. Uh, and Joe acted reluctant. The yellow kid acted reluctant towards Sam's interest until he seemingly caved. And since Giesel had the $35,000, Joe acted like he was caving, and he, he pretty much acted like, okay, Sam, you could buy this property. It's yours. Um, so from there, from that agreement made between the Yellow Kid, a.k.a. Joe Whale, and Sam Giesel, they set up a meeting between this crew and the financiers. So the meeting between the Whale crew and the financiers was set. Joe, Joe's uncle, Sam Giesel, they were on their way to Galesburg, Illinois on a train and accompanying them was uh, Mr. George Gross. Now, George Gross was said in the story um, just sort of as Joe Wales friend tagging along. Um, and this is when the smoke screen, this is when the smoke screen really took effect. So Sam Giesel paid no attention to this George Gross guy. He figured, oh, he's just one of Joe's friends. And that's where Sam messed up. And Joe mentioned on the train ride that he was actually a boxing trainer and that George Gross was his prized fighter. Now this George guy, he looked unimpressive, out of shape, really not much of a boxer, but Again, Sam paid no mind to this. He was thinking about the sale. He was thinking about collecting another fortune. And eventually the crew 
did arrive to Galesburg, and while they were waiting for the wealthy men, the financiers with the lodge, so they could discuss their business matters and the exchange, uh, Joe, uh, George started shadow boxing, and he was just shadow boxing in the corner there. Sam didn't notice George's laugh, lack of uh, expertise, and he was even wheezing, you know, coughing and wheezing for air, clearly not a professional boxer. Um, well, eventually, the financiers arrived, and the sale of the lodge to Mr. Sam Giesel for $35,000 was agreed on, and Sam's money was wired to the wealthy men. From there, everything became a little bit more friendly. They started talking. The financiers were discussing J.P. Morgan, James Pierpont Morgan, like they were friends, like they were close buddies. And this also brought the financiers to say, hey, we have a professional boxer in our group too. And I bet you he's better than yours. And this is where the smoke screen got Sam. This is when the yellow kid knew he's in the money. Um, a cash bet was made. And Sam Giesel, he was really apprehensive about the whole thing. He didn't want to actually go through with it. But in his mind, he thought, if I don't make this bet, these financiers are going to lose trust in me. And I don't want to lose the opportunity to buy this lodge for $35,000 then sell it for $115,000. So he said, you know what? Let's, let's make this happen. Let's put the bet in. And they did. And a huge thing that swayed Sam was Joe Well, the yellow kid, actually went up to him and said, you know, I know the other boxer, and we're going to rig this in our favor. And that's immediately when I would be like, I'm out of here. Um, but Sam, he, he went through with it. Uh, the fight was held. The Wells and Giesel's out-of-shape boxer versus the financier's fighter. And not to mention the financier's fighter was surprisingly... Moving, moving like he was off balance. And out of nowhere during the fight, their, the financier's boxer just came out with a haymaker and knocked George Gross right to the canvas. Blood slobbered out of his jaw. And they thought he was dead. They thought he was dead. He'd appeared unconscious, dead. And fierce tension started to rise. Mr. Sam Giesel got out of there. He didn't say anything. He went back to his home. He left the $35,000 behind. And with Giesel out of the picture and the $35,000 there, the smoke screen was successful. The whale crew, the boxers, the financiers, they all split the $35,000, which in today's money was like a million dollars between about five people. So they made off pretty good. They set a smoke screen, and you could tell that hunting lodge was the smoke screen. That's where Giesel's mind was. This little fight, that was the actual topic. That was the diversion. That was the whole point of the smoke screen, was this rigged boxing match, which Sam had no idea about. Um, and a little interpretation of that, you know, the yellow kid saw Giesel as a wealthy target, not foolish enough to fall for a simple rigged boxing match. The yellow kid had to create a smoke screen, the smoke screen being an amazing deal in real estate. Giesel didn't realize throughout their travels how the, how out of shape George Gross was and how he couldn't be a pro boxer. Uh, the fear of losing led Giesel to accept the bet with the financiers that was actually rigged against him the whole time. Um, Giesel should have seen this when the yellow kid mentioned about rigging it in Giesel's favor, which was essentially another smoke screen. Um, and the yellow kid's success was led by a familiar and inconspicuous front. An ordinary and financially intriguing idea will divert your mark's attention concealing your intention with a smoke screen that creates a complication in your mark's judgment blinding them to your intentions and goals a couple keys to power you want to keep in mind um, the best deceivers call no attention to themselves with bland and inconspicuous fronts the yellow kid whale intrigued sam diesel with a familiar business deal 
people can only focus on one thing at a time and they do not expect a smoke screen from a bland and inconspicuous person. The simplest form of a smoke screen is facial expression. Think poker face. A monotonous tone can also create a smoke screen. A smoke screen's psychological principles are distraction and misdirection. Noble gestures such as creating something to help people while more so helping yourself can be a good smoke screen. Patterns, creating a familiar pattern for your mark and you change the pattern on them at the last minute as people parade on anticipation. People want to think they know exactly what's coming. That's why patterns can be very useful. Um, another smoke screen is allowing people to mistake appearances for reality, blending in. Uh, wearing a bland mask takes patience and humility to dull your brilliant colors. Being bland and inconspicuous is your smoke screen to conceal intentions. Don't disclose the extent of your designs, progress, or purpose. Now a quick reversal, we're going to look at no smoke screens, zero smoke screens. If you already have an established reputation for deception, then smoke screens, red herrings, false sincerity, and other diversion tactics won't work. Own up to your faults, making you the honest or even the repentant. This will lead to admiration so you can continue your game of deception. Uh, sometimes a bland and inconspicuous diversion tactic won't make sense rather than a Matahari style colorful and conspicuous gesture. That's simply law three of the 48 laws of power, conceal your intentions, part two. Use smoke screens to disguise your actions.